Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Sabaton Army. We are at it again. Tonight we're going to be checking out Inmate 4859. This was originally requested by Prozentos and Capsule. Capsule, those are the first couple people who uh, gave me a request for this one. And there's been many other after those folks that have said, hey, check this song out, it's pretty important. So uh, I tried to find a live version of this. There is no live, so tonight we're just going to be doing the lyric video and then we'll jump right into the Sabaton history to find out the story behind this song. So appreciate everybody who recommended this song. If you're enjoying these videos, hey, give me a like down below. It costs you nothing and it really helps me out on my end and, uh, and I appreciate it very much. I also appreciate everybody who's been subscribing to the channel, joining the Touchy Reactions Army, if you will, and uh, especially all the comments too. I learned so much in the comments from you guys. Anything that's missed in these videos, any little extra little tidbits, you guys always let me know in the comments, and I promise you I read them all, and I try to answer as many of them that I can, especially if you know someone asks me a question, I'll give them an answer back. So uh, appreciate the back and forth, all the good feedback on that. Uh, if you want to come along for the ride and become a subscriber to the channel so you don't miss any extra content, hit that red button down below and it'll turn gray, let you know you're now a subscriber of the Touchy Reactions channel. And uh, you can say you were one of the first. There are very few of us here right now. We're a small channel growing. And uh, you can say I was there back when it started, when this when this American fool started stumbling into Sabaton's world and uh, and didn't know what he was getting into. So uh, join, the, join the Touchy Reactions family and... Uh, We'll take care of you over here. All right, that's all I got for now. We're going to jump into Inmate 4859. From what I understand in the comments, this is a very important story about a hero who most people don't know about. So I don't know who he is. I don't know what he did, but uh, we're going to find out right now. So here we go. This is Inmate 4859. There also were not any official lyric videos from Sabaton on this, so I basically just took the video that had the most uh, views on it that had lyrics attached to it so i hope the lyrics are correct uh they, they speak english so i'm pretty sure i can tell if the lyrics are off so here we go let's jump into it 48 inmate 4859 by sabaton <laughs>
Thank you. All right, so what I think I took from this so far, I know we're going to watch the history in a minute and get it all cleared up, but from what I think this is about, did he voluntarily pretend to be a inmate at Auschwitz? And then he like uh, took lots of notes and records and snuck them out somehow so that he can give intel to the Allies about what was going on there. Uh, I think that's what was going on here. And then when they found out who he was, it looks like they executed him in the end, which is sad. He, I mean, if, if he was actually trying to help people who were getting killed in Auschwitz and putting his own life on the line to do that, you know, he was clearly a hero for all to... I saw the guy with the uh, 4859 tattoo, and I'm like, man, I wonder if that's a popular tattoo as a sign of respect for what he did. Uh, do many people have that 4859 kind of as a commemorative tattoo to remember him? All right. Uh, I am going to jump into the history. I want to find out the full story about this. We've got Indy Nidell here and Joaquin. Joaquin. Still learning how to say that right. So let's jump into the history for inmate 4859 four, Vitold Plecki, Sabaton History number 42. Here we go. It's about the brave man, Vitold Plecki. The story of Witold Pilecki is as tragic as it is heroic, and it is one for the ages. He was born in the Russian Empire near the Finnish border in 1901, spent his youth as part of the nationalistic Polish Pathfinders, and fought in independent Poland's new army against the Soviets in the Polish-Soviet War. He lived a peaceful life for much of the interwar years, but eventually returned to the army reserve, and in 1939 was mobilized against the German invasion. Pilecki's Ulan regiment was shattered by the advancing Wehrmacht, but he joined other Polish stragglers and kept fighting until the fall of Warsaw. In late October, he disappeared into the underground, where he joined the resistance movement of the Taina Armia Polska, an arm of the Armia Krajowa, the Polish Home Army. Now, one of their tasks was to get inside knowledge about German prisoner of war camps, and one camp in particular, in the small town of Oswiecim, Auschwitz in German, where many Poles simply disappeared. It was suspected that they were sent to Germany as forced labor, but no one knew for sure. Pilecki came up with a dangerous plan. He would personally infiltrate Auschwitz, uncover the truth, and organize resistance in the camp. On September 19, 1940, using the alias Tomasz Serafinski, he intentionally walked into a German security sweep on the streets of Warsaw. SS men seized him, and the next day he was herded alongside other Poles into trucks at the Warsaw train station. All day they drove... Wow. Wow. Knowing what we know now, wow. Man. Balls. This guy's got balls. To think that he would be able to get in and out. I mean, did he know it was a one-way trip in? Did he know that what he was doing was going to be, there's no way out after he gets in? If he knew that going in, wow. What a freaking man. What a hero. Drove east. The men pressed together without food or water. Now, the rest of this story is told directly from the source material, from Pilecki's personal report about his experiences in the camp. It is not pretty. Arriving at the camp, Pilecki and the crowd of men were driven forward by brutal beatings from the guards. Some men were pulled out of the group at random, unprovoked, and shot in the head to break any thoughts of resistance. Accompanied by the laughter of the guards, they were then pushed on past the barbed wire and towards the parade ground, where a group of men in striped clothes was waiting for them. These men jumped the newcomers with fists and clubs. Some were actually beaten to death. The men in the striped clothes then asked them questions about their backgrounds and their jobs. And those who said uh, academics or doctors were knocked to the ground. With boots kicking against their heads, their murderers proclaimed that this is the concentration camp Auschwitz, my good man.
his head shaved, Pilecki hurried out of the bathhouse, though a guardsman knocked out two of his front teeth because he did not hold the sign with his prison number between them. From now on, Pilecki was neither himself nor Tomasz, but a number, prisoner 4859. In his paper-thin, blue-and-white striped uniform and a pair of ill-fitting wooden shoes, he found himself once again on the parade ground. There, he encountered the murderous men again. They were called capos, prisoner functionaries. Often German or Polish criminals, they were tasked with, let's say, keeping things in line inside the camp, since the regular SS men lived in barracks outside, right? Most of the capos were violent sadists who enjoyed brutally beating and torturing the helpless prisoners. Wearing yellow armbands with the capo label, they also oversaw the labor companies, to one of which Pilecki was assigned. In that labor company, it became clear that Auschwitz aimed to first exterminate the Polish intelligentsia. Prisoners with academic backgrounds who were not used to demanding physical work or who lacked the experience or the dexterity to work in the quarries were mercilessly beaten to death by the capos. Being too exhausted to lift another brick or, or to push a wheelbarrow was also a death sentence. Every evening, fewer people returned to the main camp. Every walk to the latrines, every trip to the bathhouse was accompanied by beatings and harassment. Those who came late to morning parade or, or tried to hide away were hunted down, dragged to the parade ground, and either hanged or shot in front of the others. Many tried to kill themselves, usually early in the morning before the day of torture began. If anyone tried to escape... The whole block was punished for it, standing out in the open for hours or, or doing punishment sports where men too exhausted to lift their arms fell down and died under the boots of the capos. Often, the only time to catch your breath was when they were busy murdering another prisoner. Pilecki's good physical condition saved him from this fate, but for how long could that last? Well, Pilecki set out to build his first resistance cell, a group of five men. Later, he would create other Fiverr groups, but none of them knew of the existence of the others. So in case they were captured and tortured, they could not betray the whole network, right? Those groups would either organize food or clothing or would help other members to get a, a job since it was clear from day one that staying in the worker groups, the labor groups, even well-conditioned men like Pilecki would soon die. So many of those worker prisoners did in fact die that the prisoners had to build the first camp crematorium. Pilecki noted that the camp became one big mill which ground living people to ash. In 1941, as more and more prisoners were brought in, the camp grew. Larger fences were needed, more barbed wire and more guard towers. And as Auschwitz grew, it needed to feed itself. And this opened up jobs for the older prisoners. With careful planning, Pilecki got his fiber groups into the carpenters, the postal service, and the barbers. He eventually got himself a job as a repairman for an oven inside an SS man's house outside the camp. Upon leaving the living hell of Auschwitz, he returned to a world of, of lavish gardens, laughing children at play, and villagers having normal everyday conversations with one another. Polensky felt the questions burning inside him. What was the real world? What, what was the real nature of man? What was the culture of the 20th century? Since mankind had advanced so far from the barbarism of old, how is this still possible? Or, or was this the true face of humanity? Would the whole world look like this if the boundaries of civilization disappeared? Each morning, he and the other prisoners found themselves surprised to be alive. Their bodies thin to the bone, black and blue from the daily beatings, riddled with lice and fleas, living on a starvation diet. Only his daily mantra, you're not giving up, helped Pilecki keep on and try to inspire others to do the same. Survival was only possible through friendship and mutual help. Loners died quick. Now, up until May 1941, it was possible for ordinary Poles to be released from Auschwitz, mostly by their families paying enormous sums to the Germans. 
Those released prisoners smuggled Pilecki's notes to the army at Krajowa. But when the war between Germany and the Soviet Union began, this stopped. Instead, new groups began arriving to the camp. Many were now Jews, and by the end of August, the first Soviet prisoners were transported to Auschwitz. Pilecki reports that one day, 700 officers were tightly packed into a room all day, till finally a group of German soldiers with gas masks on threw gas containers inside. This was the first act of gassing people with hydrogen cyanide at Auschwitz, according to Pilecki. Soon after, though, on his way to work, he passed groups of naked Soviet prisoners waiting to be led into the crematorium where they were gassed and burned. The capos were often brutal savages, but the bestiality of some of the SS guards was even worse. Pilecki tells of guard dogs trained to go for the throats of prisoners, the torture of smashing testicles with a hammer, and many stories far too nightmarish to tell here. Now with his cells set up in important positions all over the camp, Pilecki was ready to start a revolt, but he needed help from the outside to be successful. The prisoners were thirsty for revenge, and they were ready for anything since they did not fear death after all they had endured. But even had they managed to overwhelm the guards and take the camp, they would not be able to hold it for long. Pilecki believed that the army at Krajowa had received at least one of his messages. He had urged them to stage an attack or, or, or send in paratroopers from the free Polish army over in Britain or, or drop a crate of arms onto them or something. But so far, nothing. Without help from the outside, Pilecki's third Christmas in Auschwitz came and went. And Auschwitz was now changing. There was no longer collective punishment, no outright murder, or even everyday brutality, or at least it was toned down. See, Auschwitz became a factory, which would now systematically murder its prisoners instead of individualistic random killing. Not with the batons of the capos, but with phenol and gas. There were three crematoriums working simultaneously, able to burn corpses within minutes. By April 1943, more and more of the surviving Poles were sent out of Auschwitz to make room for Jewish prisoners from all over Europe and the Soviet Union. This meant the end of Pilecki's network, as its members were sent to other camps. So after two years and seven months of surviving in Auschwitz, Pilecki decided it was time to break out, since an uprising shift job at a bakery outside the camp. Shortly after Easter, as one guard was asleep, he and two other men pushed the door open and ran. Shots cracked out behind them, but they ran all night and all day until they reached a small town. With help from patriotic Poles, Pilecki smuggled himself back to Warsaw, where, on August 23, 1943, after nearly a thousand days in Auschwitz, he met with commanders of the Armia Krajowa telling them of his experiences, all the death, all the torture, but people hesitated to believe him. It seemed all too unbelievable, even for, even for the hated Germans to do all this killing. They knew it was bad, but not this bad. Pilecki would stay in the underground army and fight in the Warsaw Uprising of 1944. He was later interned in prisoner of war camps and after liberation in 1945, was assigned to the 2nd Corps of the Polish Army in Italy, where he turned in his report about Auschwitz to the British. For Pilecki, Auschwitz was the symbol of the Polish struggle for existence. He himself could never go back to a normal civilian life after experiencing what you've just heard. He maintained contact with the underground resistance, now against the Soviet Union, after the war, and indeed returned to Poland in late 1945 to report on the Soviet occupation. He lived and worked undercover, but on May the 8th, 1947, the Ministry of Public Security captured him. He was tortured and dragged before a kangaroo court and accused of, well, accused of many things, including espionage and planning an armed uprising. The sentence was death. On May 25th, 1948, in the Mokotov prison in Warsaw, Witold Pilecki was executed. His final resting place remains unknown. 
In 1990, Pilecki and others from that show trial were rehabilitated, and today he is celebrated, and with good reason, as a Polish patriot and a hero. Now, we cannot even imagine what he went through and what courage it must have taken to do so. Well, it's a pretty heavy story, you know? Yeah, uh, I gotta be honest, over, I don't know how many people we researched for the Heroes album, but if there ever was a slam dunk, you know, part of my language, what the fuck moment, this was it, I would say. And it is, you know, there, there, sacrifice is one thing, bravery is another thing, but doing all of that, I mean, think of the odds, I mean, getting in and getting out. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go <laughs> and, to Auschwitz on purpose. And then I'm gonna get out yeah. on purpose. And doing all that for a cause, and for what is essentially what is a noble and a just cause, any way you slice it. Yeah, and know? I mean, I am so surprised also that how isn't there a major Hollywood blockbuster about this? That makes no sense at all. Yeah, it's and people are coming up with you know Hollywood scripts. I mean, I'm not bashing the film industry here. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, people are making scripts that are less fantastic and not true, and still nobody. And this is a true this. story, and it's even the tragic ending and stuff. You know, yeah. that's uh, I mean, maybe that's why they're not doing it. Well, they could throw in or like a romantic interest <laughs> or something. Again, Gwyneth Paltrow, maybe yeah, I don't know. Romance in Auschwitz, great. <laughs> Stranger things have happened in Hollywood. Yes, true. You know, but that leads you to wonder. I mean, there must have been romantic stories in, in Auschwitz. I, I guess so. I mean, we met a woman called Anna who fought in the Polish resistance okay. during the uprising. Yeah. She actually said that, yeah, there was, well, she was flirting with a guy in the middle of, you know, I mean, not as they were shooting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, but, uh, I mean, but that's only... That's not 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Exactly. So, I mean, she said it's um, strange how how man, or, you know, you can normalize such a extreme situation For and seven. life still goes on. You still go to the toilet, everybody understands that, but you are still actually falling in love while fighting or waging a war. You know? it's weird. And if this guy could break out, then of course you could break from the men's side to the women's side. Yeah. You know, it's... Not, I mean, if there's one thing this all proves is nothing is impossible. <laughs> nothing is as impossible as you think. I know, but it is. It's you know what? Even more than just a Hollywood movie, it'd be a good miniseries. Yes, you know, actually. HBO. Do you hear this? See, if anybody out there HBO is listening, and Yuki and I'll write it. I mean, I'm a writer, and he's he's good at emotion, so together we could we could do it. Yeah, but don't put me in, in, in acting in it because I suck as an actor. So as we've noticed over these months of yes. Sabaton history, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, what about the actual song itself, though? Uh, did, did you decide on the, the topic before you wrote the song, or did you have the music sitting around? And, and I wrote the music with Peter, our producer. Uh -huh. uh, okay. The first time we wrote a song together. And uh, him, you know, coming from, you know, Lindemann, Payne, Hypocrisy, those bands, and the harder side of things, uh, it became a bit of a harder and very, very dark song. So okay. as we were writing that song, I realized that this is the song because yeah. obviously, even though it's a very, very, you know, we're singing about a very courageous man, it would not have made sense at all to have a, you know, proud, uplifting song yeah. to the subject. Yeah, you know? especially, yeah. I wonder what he was like as a person, like personality-wise, because you don't, I mean, from the story, you can see, okay, he's got a lot of dedication, but you can meet someone on the street, you don't know if they're a dedicated type person or not. No, you know? no. So it would be, um, it would be really interesting. Well, uh, that's your homework, guys, to, uh, to go and uh, put the song on and think of Vitol Pilecki. That's all for today. Thank you very much. See you next time. All right, everyone, here's the drill. A lot of you have been supporting us through Patreon, and I'd like to thank you all so much for that. It really helps. That's what makes this channel happen. So click on subscribe. You know the drill, basically. And I just want to say thank you all. See you soon. All right. Oof. Inmate 4859. Vitol Pilecki. A hero, but most people don't know about. What a, I understand why there's not a live now. I can't imagine them doing this song live. I don't know. Woo. You uh, do all you can to not think about the horrors that man can implement on one another. 
and then every now and then you're reminded of some of the evil that men have done to other men and women over the history of our of our world. It's really disgusting. It's really scary. They, I think they mentioned it in here at one point. If all civil society broke down, is this what we would turn into? Would, would, would we revert back to these savage tendencies with regards to torture and just inflicting nothing but ignorant pain and suffering on people for, for really no reason whatsoever? I hope we never find out. I hope that doesn't happen. This is a this is a hard one. Ugh, man! I tell you what, Sabaton. Sabaton has a way of making sure when you learn the lesson, you're going to remember it, and you're not going to let history repeat itself because you you've learned from the history of the past. So, all right. Well, thank you for the recommendation. This was an important one to watch. Uh, I'm glad that I watched it. This. Uh, gentlemen I'd never heard of before. I'd never heard of somebody voluntarily getting themselves put into Auschwitz to do surveillance. And man, he made it out. Can you believe that? I mean, the specifics around the way he died sounded like bullshit, but uh, man, what a man. Salute to uh, Witold Pilecki uh, from Poland, a hero. Never forget. All right, I appreciate y'all watching this video. This was a kind of a rough one to watch, not very uh, uplifting, but it's definitely important. It's a story of a hero who sacrificed everything to make sure that he could stop suffering for that millions. So, oh, if you like these kind of videos, uh, you know, give me a like down below. Again, it helps the channel. If you want to keep uh, seeing the rest of these as they come out, and you don't want to miss one. Hit that subscribe button over here. Turn it. Turn the red button gray. And uh, if you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link in the, in the description down below, and there'll be a link up here in the corner for uh, those of you who want to come over and see some of these early. We're going to be at least two to three weeks ahead on all our videos, so if you're uh, jonesing for some more Sabaton content from the channel, you can come over and join the Patreon, and, and you'll have at least four or five videos that are already shot and edited and ready to go up on YouTube over there waiting for you. So that's all I got for this one. Appreciate y'all stopping by, and don't forget to come on back.